Folks, the National Cancer Institute estimates nearly 1.7 million new cases of cancer will be diagnosed in the U.S. every year. With few common types of cancer treatments available, patients are limited in how they can fight the disease. Well, a Morehouse professor, top physicist, Dr. Hadia Nicole Green uh, at Morehouse School of Medicine is developing a laser treatment with little to no side effects. She hopes to give cancer patients a new way to beat the disease. Her research is very much groundbreaking. I recently talked with her about this. We began with me asking her why she chose to study this type of cancer research. My aunt who raised me from age four, right after I graduated from undergrad at Alabama a and University, she announced that she had woman's cancer, so either cervical or ovarian. And she said that she would rather die than experience the side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. I took care of her the last three months of her life. Three months after she passed, my uncle who raised me from age four was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. He said that he would go through the treatments. His doctors gave him three months to live. I nursed him back and he lived another 10 years. Wow. But I watched him and took care of him as he went through chemotherapy and radiation. I watched him lose 150 pounds, all of his hair, his eyelashes, his eyebrows. I watched his fingernails turn black. And I saw how his skin went from being a beautiful chocolate to looking like it had been burnt in an oven or barbecued. It was horrific. I got to experience firsthand the horrors of cancer and the horrors of cancer treatment. And I said, there has to be a better way. So I took my undergraduate experiences with research that were based in optical communications and lasers. And I was planning on revolutionizing the way we receive internet and cable TV. Mm -hmm. And then I said, if we can see from a satellite in outer space, if a dime on the ground is face up or face down, we should be able to do a better job pinpointing the tumor and treating just the tumor and not the whole person. Why not? And if we call one person in a room full of people, just their cell phone rings and not the entire room, why can't we have that kind of precision when we're treating cancer? Why not? Now, did folks thought, think you were crazy saying all that? <laughs> it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter, because I, I felt like if there was something that I was born to do, maybe this was it. And if other people were going to do it, it would have been done already. So I took it upon myself and pursued a PhD in physics specifically to develop this treatment. Mm -hmm. And the, my PhD advisor said, usually my graduate students work on my projects and my ideas, but I had funding from um, the National Science Foundation and some other organizations. And they, that allowed me the freedom to explore this idea. And I found a mentor at the Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. I spent five years in his lab developing my idea. And when I started to demonstrate what I was doing with laser activated nanoparticles in mice, and I got the first results, the tumor shrank so fast that nobody believed it. That's when they thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, no, the tumor was the size of a chickpea and now it's gone. And everybody was like, yeah, right. And I'm like, I didn't take pictures, so I had to go back. <laughs> <laughs> you always gotta have evidence. <laughs> right, so I had to go back and repeat the experiments a couple of times to make sure that I documented exactly what happened and the tumor regression that I induced after a single 10 minute treatment with these laser activated nanoparticles and the results were remarkable. The beauty in what I've done, if you can see on the top left hand corner, this is before the laser and nanoparticle treatment. Okay. And then this is right after the nanoparticle and laser treatment. And you see how the scar starts to heal and at the end of the 15 days, there's barely a scar left. I was like, oh my God, honey, I shrunk the tumor. <laughs> and then my advisor told me, nobody wants a cancer treatment that doesn't incorporate a drug. It'll never see the light of day. Go back to the drawing board. So I went back to the drawing board and incorporated what people are calling immunotherapy and used an antibody that's already FDA approved for treating head and neck cancer and colorectal cancer. And I used that antibody as the delivery vehicle to deliver my nanoparticles to the site of the tumor. And I added a fluorescent tag. So you have a three-in-one system, a three-in-one platform that can target, image, and treat that's minimally invasive, that doesn't have the observed side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. And after a single 10 minute treatment with that platform, there's 40% reduction in the tumor volume over two days. The beauty in that is that without the laser activated nanoparticles, those same antibodies that's already FDA approved, it takes months to get that kind of result. 
So we're talking about enhancing the time of therapy, reducing the cost, reducing the side effects. And this is something for me was near and dear to my heart simply because I didn't think anybody else should have to experience what my aunt and uncle went through. Can this be used in multiple areas when it comes to cancer? Okay, very good question. So the way that I designed the platform, it is not cancer type specific. Even though I initially demonstrated this on head and neck cancer, it will work in theory, and that's one of the things I just received the Career Development Award, to demonstrate how robust this therapy is for breast cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, um, ovarian, and there are other cancer types that I'd like to explore, but a lot of that is having enough resources to do that exploration and then to move into humans, translate it into clinical trials, and then launch it so that it's available around the country. So you got the million dollar um, grant from, uh, from the VA. Yes. Um, what will that do? So that covers five years of research. It's $200,000 a year. It will allow me um, to demonstrate this in head and neck cancer and tumors that are metastatic and compare what I'm doing to the current chemotherapy treatments. So it's in the big scheme of things, for me, it's a huge boost as an early career scientist because mm -hmm. most people in my area, they have 300 publications and 30 years of experience. So it gives me a chance to um, move into the scientific community of cancer researchers. The other thing that I learned after I got the award is that every clinical trial costs somewhere between $200,000 and $500,000 for phase one. And then there are some phase three clinical trials that can cost upwards of a million dollars. And then the last 200 companies that commercialize a medical device to get through FDA and the regulatory experience, the average over those 200 companies was $31 million. And so I'm like, okay, it's nice to have this first million, but now there's this huge mountain if I wanna commercialize this and make this readily available for the people who need it, there's... So, uh, so how's that process going? I just started it, I just started it. And one of the things that I'm grateful about is the opportunity to come on your show to talk about the need for, the need for people to support research so that things can move from the lab, something that's working, effectively in mice to move it into humans. And that's something that I need the support of everybody who believes that there's a better way to treat cancer. I need that support. So what's your number? 30? 30. And you're trying to raise it over how long? Over three years. Over three years? Yes. All right, and so the million dollar grant is the start of that? Yes. All right, so now you need 29 more? Yes. Uh, and so uh, who are you talking to? Where are you going? How, how are you going about I'm, that process? I'm starting with you, Roland. <laughs> Okay, so, so I mean, what is your mechanism? Have, have you established uh, your website? Have you, for folks yes. for information? So there are two different ways that people can donate. First is through Morehouse School of Medicine's website. They can go to their website and make a donation and designate it to Dr. Green's research. And then the other mechanism is my own personal website is www.physics2cancer.org and physics, P-H-Y-S-I-C-S, the number two, cancer.org and you can make a donation on that site. Have you had conversations with um, other foundations, philanthropists as well, uh, who are interested uh, in funding cancer research? So not yet, not yet. So I'm happy to start having those conversations. Okay, well yes. look, we're certainly glad uh, to have you here. Uh, it, is, it is certainly exciting. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure. Kickstart your day at seven and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.